Good morning. It's Friday. It's February 4. It's a beautiful sunny day. The sun made me think of a passage of scripture in Exodus 34. Moses had been on the mountain with the Lord uh, for, for uh, several weeks. And verse 29 says, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, as he came down, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Moses' face was glowing with the, with the shine of the Lord. Uh, he had been alone with the Lord for 40 days, <clears throat> 40 nights, uh, simply being in God's presence and receiving from the Lord the tablets containing the Ten Commandments. So when he came down the mountain, after nearly six weeks, the glory of the Lord so radiated off of him that the people could not bear to look at his face. And he had to wear a veil. He had to cover his face uh, to speak to the people. It, it, there's a similar scripture in Acts chapter 6, not exactly the same, but it's, it's similar, where uh, Stephen was before the council of the Jewish leaders and he was explaining uh, his testimony. They had questioned him uh, about his, his Christian testimony. And in chapter 6, verse 15 uh, it says, all that sat looking at him, all that were on the council, looked steadfastly at him and saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. So in some way, Stephen also was shining. Um, I, I've never seen anyone like that. I don't know anybody who has ever seen anybody like that whose face uh, exhibited this glowing as Moses and Stephen did. Um, I, I doubt anyone would be very likely to mistake us for an angel. We haven't had the opportunity, the privilege, as Moses did, to spend time in God's direct physical presence. Even though having been saved, been born again, we should have a different countenance than before we met the Lord. We ought to be able to, to say that we, that we even look different uh, from, from before we were saved. Uh, maybe it could be said of us. Hopefully it should be able to be said of us. As it was said of Peter and John, um, They, the people marveled and took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. So people recognized that the, that the Lord had an impact. I hope it's true with us. Actually, God in his word even promises that this is possible to the extent that we spend time in the word, in the Bible. This is because the word itself uh, is alive with the light of God's glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, But we all, with open face beholding as in, a, as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. So we should reflect the Lord. It's no doubt we live in dark times. It seems spiritually and morally the conditions of our nation, our world, are, uh, are degrading and worsening. But we are God's people, and we are the light of the world. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let's pray then. Let's pray that God would enable us as God's people to hold forth, as Philippians chapter 2 and verse 15 says, hold forth the word of life even in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine like lights in the world. That's for us. So Paul was acknowledging to the Philippians that they lived in a, in a, in a crooked a nation, a perverse nation. But he said, you're lights, so shine. I pray, Lord, help us to shine and be a bright light in a dark world. Amen. Will you pray that way? Let's take a minute and ask the Lord to help us to do this. Lord, we want to be lights shining brightly for you accurately and, and honestly reflecting the light of the Lord, the light of the gospel, the light of hope and truth to many people in the world. Let us shine. Lord, even as the, the sun in the sky is brightly shining today, Lord, let us brightly shine in a dark world. Help us to do that. Lord, I pray for your people. You know our many needs. Help us today. Give comfort, give encouragement, give strength, give healing. Lord, do what you do, and we say thank you for that. I bless your people and our homes and families in the name of your son. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you today. It's Friday. We'll be together in God's house on Sunday. Remember, we're going to start classes again at 930, and we'll have worship at 1030. We'll pray together. We'll share the Lord's Supper together. We'll worship together. We'll hear the word. It's going to be a great day. Uh, it's going to reach 40 degrees, they say, on Sunday. So uh, 
you know what that means. It'll be wet and messy, but thank the Lord. I think we're past this snow. We're past the storm and uh, we're on our way to springtime. Amen. Have a great weekend and we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless.